All right. So did you want to chat first or do you want me to go into your energy fields or and chat after? Or what do you think? Maybe just chat a little bit about what is going on and then go in the I want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, because I'm like now, like maybe I awakened four years ago or sometime like that. Mm -hmm. Since then I'm working, working, working harder, working harder all the time. And it's just like, yeah. I get a little bit further, then I fall back again. And it's like just continuing, continuous cycle of repeating patterns that mm -hmm. won't really go. And I worked with many people that are high caliber, you know, like you say that, like really talented spiritual people, healers and stuff, and they all do something. And sometimes it's help, it helps a little bit, but then it just fades away again. Right. So we need to get to the bottom of, we don't want it to fade away anymore. We want it to remain yes. continual. And exactly. yeah, well, one thing's for sure. It's, it's actually, so this awakening process for you, it, I'm surprised it only happened four years ago. You must have kind of sensed <laughs> some stuff leading up to that point. You know what I mean? Well, actually like the true awakening was two years ago, <laughs> like really true. And well, yeah, I was since a child. I was doing stuff. That's that right. That usual. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Wow. But, well, I was I was extremely negative all the time. So just in the last, yeah, maybe a little bit before the four years, I was starting to not be that negative and so to shift it. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. And you know, when you that that also it kind of, you know, when it comes to working within your heart, the more that you shift into just continuing to be positive towards yourself, loving towards yourself, just try as best you can, obviously. It helps you get more in tune with the heart energy and just helps it to grow and, you know, get louder and easier to work with. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a tough part, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will say you're a fantastic person to work with and very interesting Thank energy you. field. And I'm super determined today to really make a deep down impact and one that's going to keep rumbling for a while. I love that so much. Like really go <laughs> to the bottom of it, like really deep. Yeah. And I really hope you can finally help me. Oh, yeah. To <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, de I'm determined. When I get determined, awesome. dang it, I'm going to win. I'm going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Same, yeah. same as me. Like, I really yeah. enjoy That's good. I'm having like a challenge. I will, I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I'm focused. I'm focused here. <laughs> okay. So, Great. you want me to get started now? Yeah. Would be okay. awesome. <laughs> so when I go into your energy field, I'm just going to be in my zone. So you don't, um, don't worry about um, saying anything. So if I'm talking to your deeper essence, I might say I'm talking to you, but um, I want to actually hear what your subconscious self, how it responds and reacts, because that, that's going to help me get deeper and deeper because the conscious self is, uh, it always kind of, you know, consciously we feel certain ways, but subconsciously we have other weird stuff going on in there so I'm just gonna be a chatterbox um, for a total hour and okay. then uh, then we can talk after okay okay so I will not talk at all during the session no you get to okay. just chill out <laughs> okay. okay okay are you ready for this or what <laughs> I'm ready <laughs> okay all right let's see here Hmm. Okay, so I'm entering in and there is a doorway and there's two sides to the door. One is a golden side and one is kind of black. It's not entirely black. Maybe it's wood, but it has some black mold on it or something. But I could open the doors and then see what's inside. And that's where I'm at so far. Okay. <sighs> All right, I'm just letting energy just process through here and it's just going to whoosh right down my face right now. I haven't even been able to touch these doors just yet, but I'm getting close. And I'm telling your deeper consciousness, I'm saying you're doing a really awesome job and you should be so proud of yourself. And together, let's open these doors and let's get to the root of this thing. Let's do this. 
And I experience you as a very small person, like a leprechaun size, like a forest gnome or something. You're, I don't know, three feet tall. You're really tiny, um, but you're all blacked out. You kind of look like you're made out of cigarette ash that's all turned black, but it's kind of, it's all condensed and forms this little version of you. And you tell me that I won't find anything in those doors. And you show me that uh, the black of the wooden side is starting to disappear and it's just absolutely pale wood. There's no uh, like color to it or anything. And the gold inside is starting to appear as though it never really was gold. Now let me analyze this. I tell you that you need to believe in me and you need to believe in something better than what you're choosing to see right now because I see a golden side and I see this other side has a little bit of black to it and that is truly what is there I'm telling you you got to trust me on this one and I just scoop you up and I put you on my shoulder like a parrot and you get smaller and smaller and it's it's almost like you're resisting or you're afraid to see what is in there um, to face what is in there um, so that's why you're kind of trying to create a distortion that I'm not seeing things right. Um, but let's just, you know, let's just keep moving forward and any type of resistance will just work through it. So let's see if I can open these doors now. Boy, are they ever changing colors, changing dynamics. <laughs> they're, they're like constantly moving. Okay. And colors and, and, and wood, gold, not wood, not gold. <laughs> okay. Come on now. I can open these. I can open these. Okay. Yeah. So when I open these, it's sort of like black honey in here and it wants to pour out, but it also is stuck inside. And I just say it's okay. And I just walk into it. I don't choose to try to do, make it go away or feel like I can't go in there because the honey is in the way. I just going straight into it. Okay. This is uh, this is creating movement around the, the forehead region, the top of the head and the heart. And it's like weird when this happens, but it's kind of like right under my jaw. I feel energy right there. And this, this honey pot has something to do with the heart. And all this goop here is uh, covering the heart. And it makes it so the heart is more numb and... Uh, Almost like you you have to get teeth work done and they give you the shot in there. Um, but you can kind of tell. I mean, you can tell you have a face, but it, you can't feel all the pain. Um, your heart is like this in this scene. Um, it's there, but it's kind of this goop uh, makes it so you can't always feel the pain. And perhaps there's a reason why, you know? Perhaps there's some reason why your soul and your deeper subconscious feels that it is a very smart thing to do to um, novocaine your heart to be on the safe side, right? Okay. All right, there's some movement here, just some wiggling, energy wiggling. Okay. I'm just putting my hand into the heart here. And this is so interesting because it's almost like I'm having to move my hand through dimensions in order to get to your heart. It's like my hand is going through worlds <laughs> to get in here. <sighs> so let's see. And when I get in here, it's actually full of um, like needles on the inside and it's very sharp. Um, it's not like thorns. It's like, like um, needles that you use to numb your gums and things, um, surgical needles. And I can feel so many in here and they're sharp. I mean, they're pricking my hands. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm getting in there closer and I'm actually pulling it towards me as well. Because we don't need all these these dimensional gaps. I mean, we need to just be working interdimensionally. So we only need to be in the human mind. We just need to be in one place. And when we are in one place, we're in all places. But when we start to kind of categorize ourselves, like, well, I'm in the ninth dimension and the 11th dimension and in the third dimension. No, you're literally in every dimension. You're in the worst of the worst and the highest of the highest, but they're all the greatest ones. 
You're in every single dimension. So to get you um, interdimensionally lined up is going to help you majorly as well. So I'm pulling your heart towards me and we gotta, we gotta bring this interdimensional stuff into working together as one kind of thing. All right. All right, so super numb. I'm gonna, this is, this might be numb for a while, so I'm gonna have to feel this one out. Okay, oh man, I'm inside here. It looks like a, a like kind of an old strawberry. The heart does. And all these needles, man, this makes me so sad. <sighs> There's just so much sadness in here. It's like, it's like nobody wanted to eat your strawberry heart and then it got rotten and nobody definitely wants your strawberry heart because it's a rotten heart. But that's not true. You know, that's totally not true. Ugh. Gosh, there's a lot of sadness in here. So this is an image about the heart is also in the emotional gut as well. And I'm telling you, Johannes, this, there's a lot of Novocaine energy going on here, a lot of major numbness. So it's no wonder that um, energy work can be effective for only so long, but this numbness is quite substantial. So it's almost like the honeypot energy just sort of floods in and goes back to normal. Then the reason why is because I'll tell you, energy fields have programs and um, it's sort of like, you know, the years from one to five are the most important for your development and you'll be working with that learning for the rest of your life. You know, your energy field is kind of like this. So when I clear stuff out you're in, and it's no longer actually there, there's still memory and your energy field can say, well, I think it's there. No, it's not there. So we got to get the program actually aligned with, oh, I don't even know what that was. That is it. That really isn't there. That way you can start moving on and it will stop having this like a flood with the Novocaine honey reaction. So let's see. All right. Just some emotional release here. Okay. I'm going to have little you on my shoulder um, talk about what a beautiful heart you have. And he's made out of ash, so he doesn't like he doesn't know how to talk. I mean, it's sort of like um, he tries to use his voice, but nothing happens because he's made out of ash. He doesn't actually have vocal cords. But I tell him that he does, and that it's okay to try and say something, even if it's blowing some ash out of your mouth. That's okay. He's really trying, and he can't seem to say it, and it makes him cry because he really does care. He really is trying to correct this. And, and he feels kind of um, defeated. And he's trying, I'm trying, but I'm trying. And it won't come out. He tells me that through his energy, that he can't speak. And I say, okay, I'm going to go into you and we're going to speak with each other so I can help you. And so I become your hands and your face and your throat and your body as this little person. I think it's interesting that you remind me of a leprechaun because leprechauns are mischievous and um, they're full of good luck, right? Um, there's something special about leprechauns. Um, so that says something about you too. Even though he's all blacked out right now, I guarantee we're going to bring him to life. So, okay, let's see if we can do this together. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, we're going to try here. You have a beautiful heart, Johannes. One of the most beautiful hearts that I've ever seen. You have such a beautiful heart. And this heart is so special that when this heart is alive, the feelings that flow through it are like heavenly, like liquid gold, <laughs> like the most wonderful feelings that anybody could ever experience. There, the heart then becomes alive. And it's okay now to let go of these punctures and this Novocaine. It's okay to trust that you are safe and that pain may be a part of the human experience, but it doesn't have to defeat you. It doesn't have to destroy you. There's always a solution. And the good news is you're not alone. I'm here to help with the solution. So it's okay to just, let's just remove one of these needles. If we could just remove one of these needles today, then you're already taking a step forward. Okay. 
some some ugly stuff is coming from this <laughs> from the the bottom it's like your heart is lying on a side and it looks like a rotten strawberry and then from the darkness of this tip um comes some sort of a gross looking guy um but one of the needles does come out i will say and that might be why he is coming forward because of security purposes. So when he senses that one needle is removed, um, the alarms are going off and now he needs to make sure that um, we get that needle back where it goes, right? So, okay. And he's not all that bad. He just, he's just sensitive. He's just kind of worried. He's just uncertain. And he looks weird. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. He kind of looks like an oversized forehead, small, tiny eyes. But he's like kind of a moving or gravitating ghost-like man. He's got kind of a, lots of cloth kind of hanging in different places. And he looks a bit tattered and torn um, just all around him. And he's gray and black and kind of white in places. And uh, he's starting to remember he's starting his alarming sensation is starting to feel safe and it's as if he's starting to remember himself and as he starts to come to life i notice more of the needles come out oh man i he's been doing this he's been i mean i can feel the memory of him saying um like stabbing as though these needles are knives just stabbing it stabbing 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 saying when will i go away i need the pain to go away and he just keeps doing this but it's it's like uh survival i guess you got to do that for survival and so i can feel every time one of these was stabbed into the heart i can feel the stabbing desperation to just make the pain go away and uh they're coming out but there's some ex super vulnerability still about this but they are out all of these needles are out and it's interesting all these surgical needles look totally different than each other unique um uniquely different and uh, let's see Okay, he's, uh, he can't remember. He's, uh, he can feel it in his heart that this is the right thing to do, but he doesn't remember why he did this in the first place. He doesn't, uh, he can't really, he's really kind of super foggy. He's really foggy. He, he's even sort of like this. He's just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's even as though he doesn't even know who he is, why he's here that he's even talking to me anymore. He can't even remember what happened three seconds ago. He's just like super foggy all of a sudden. Oh man, something very strange just happens and uh, a new version of a persona comes out and this is pure white and has a big old honking surgical needle and just stabs it into him and then just starts stabbing him with it as though he is the heart. Just even, he's just so caught off guard and confused and now suddenly he's, the one getting stabbed with a bunch of surgical needles. And, and it's sort of like, there's like a joyful uh, inspiration here. And it, it's like drawing blood from him, like too many mosquitoes that's going to suck you dry. That's kind of what's happening. And he, all the, the color is being drained from him and he's being turned completely white. And this nasty person, this nasty being is also pure white. And, huh. Is he gonna? Is he gonna drink the blood? Is that what he's doing to bring some version of color back into himself? Is that what's happening here? Oh, this is strange. Let me just watch. No, he doesn't, and he actually becomes quite weak from it. It's almost as though he's attacking himself. And he doesn't realize that, uh, yeah, it feels great for a second to, to torture yourself or punish yourself. Then you suck yourself dry, and now you two are completely and utterly exhausted. So he is a reflection of this guy, and this guy is a reflection of him. And they're both now completely wiped out, and they're completely white and totally drained. And the heart is sort of like the surgical needles are kind of lifting up again and just sort of like they're going to go back into the heart. But no, that the heart, like, oh man, it's like, please, 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 please put the needles in me, please, 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 please. please. <laughs> but it's like that, that, that feels actually like a super longing. Like this is going to feel joyful for them to do that. No, 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 no. I won't let, I, I'm not going to let them do that. Oh boy, this is complicated. Hmm. Let's see what next. Okay. <sighs> 
just some anger going on here. <sighs> anger, emotion. <sighs> okay. Okay. Okay, we gotta play this one out. So from this angry cloud, there's yet another version of you. And then this one's also a heart destroying uh, version. But instead of sticking a big old knife into this, what's left of a rotten strawberry, um, it just slices the throat, just completely sli slices the throat. But it's not like the head uh, comes off or anything. It just kind of bleeds and you're not able to speak. You're not able to use your vocal cords at all. And he feels very proud of himself. And he laughs at those two who just, that one just drained the other one and now they're both weak. He just laughs at them. How, how pathetic. But I just show him that he's doing the same thing. So now his throat is also slit. And I say, what good is this doing any of you? Why do you keep doing this to yourself and yourselves? Like, this is getting you literally nowhere. It's like the three stooges. Like, we can't, this isn't working. We got to not do this anymore. This is not the solution. Okay. <laughs> a lot more. Uh, there's like a big old um, toy chest of consciousnesses, like dolls and things just like fall from the sky and they're all like uh, strangling or punching or knifing or stabbing <laughs> each other. And it's just like a big old all out in internal war going on. <laughs> I'm just watching it like, what is this? <laughs> so much happening here. Okay. We're, we're getting more of that venting happening. That's very good. And this is all really centered in your heart space. I mean, this is happening. So again, it's no wonder that it kind of keeps going back to the same vibrational rhythm of uh, what, it, what it's always been, because this is what the vulnerability is at the most, the most surface layer of your heart. It's this. So but believe it or not, we're just going deeper with every persona that jumps out. That's the next deeper layer with this. Okay. Just letting them to keep playing it out. <sighs> A lot of them are turning white now too. Oh, like, I mean, they're pretty much all turning white. <sighs> and this one guy who did the original slit of the throat, he's still standing here. And it starts to look like chess pieces, lots of pawns and one knight. And the one that slit the throat, he's on a black horse. And then all the others turn into white pawns. And he's very protective and he kind of states that he owns your heart or he owns you. And so, I mean, he can say that if he wants to. Now let me feel this one out some more. I say, are you proud to own a heart that has a rotten strawberry and a bunch of feuding internal selves that are all turning into white pawns? I mean, that, that's not really um, something to be proud of, I don't think. I mean, you own this desecration. Um, why does that make you feel so proud of yourself? Oh, wow. This is some sort of weird self-realization just happens here. And... Uh, he starts to turn into ash and he starts to look like the little ashy leprechaun that was on my shoulder and he couldn't use his throat either. And uh, it's all starting to come back into his mind or his memory, what this has all been about. And this is what it's, what it's like. And he's absolutely kind of like in shock. He's having like a extreme self-realization moment going on here. I will tell you, um, as I analyze the way he's responding and everything we've experienced thus far, oh my gosh, can we, we can just, this, we, there's so much now still beneath the surface of this. And this is sort of like a hockey puck space. It's sort of in that shape and it's uh, like above what is some more stuff down below. But I have to reconcile this before it can go just straight down there. This needs to be looked at. Okay. I, I tell him that um, this energy is just simply circulating just around the hockey puck. And as it keeps doing this, I feel the leprechaun is uh, 
actually starting to um, get it or grasp it on a level that he wants to now go deeper. So let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. Okay. The, we are going deeper, but again, the weird dimensional stuff happening here. There's something about time that's ticking, um, ticking, time is ticking, ticking, ticking away. I think there's a song like that. Um, so this just goes back and forth. And I can see lots of uh, dimensional realms. I mean, just like a slicing bread. Each slice of bread is like a dimensional realm in between this clock, which is a giant thing that ball that goes back and forth, um, and then where we're standing. So again, I'm kind of lassoing this clock, and I'm just put, pulling it towards us. And all this dimensional stuff, this has got to be reconciled. So just keep moving through the layers. But that is part of the intention here is we got to, this, this interdimensional stuff, we've got to be one dimension. We've got to be all in, connected to all the dimensions in a oneness, in a way of oneness. Okay. He, uh, when I pull the clock closer to us, he starts to feel very distorted in his mind, as though his mind kind of gets filled with a weird fuzzy cloud, like a cotton ball, like a really big cotton ball that takes up his whole brain. And he starts to cry and he says, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing, why are you doing this to me? 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 And uh, kind of takes on like a a weird persona of uh, like a mental institution type patient um, that's sort of like uh, begging the nurse to, to, to like get me out of here. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you forcing me into this in, in, insane bed, person's bed? Like, I, I, why are you doing this? Like I'm forcing some nightmare upon him. And I tell him it's okay. Just if you need to just continue to circulate that in your thoughts, just go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm going to analyze everything else, but I am going to help bring you into a better balance. So one thing at a time. All right. All right. Yep. Yep. Okay. He's still circulating. Why are you doing this to me? And some sort of darkness kind of comes over his mind and the need to use the knife and slit the throat is uh, once again coming back. But this time... I get it. He's gonna th slit my throat. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna let me participate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens here. Um, okay, so as you see, Johannes, this has nothing to do with your conscious mind. This has everything to do with your like infinite deeper layers and how they feel about love. And now we can understand why you're struggling here, and it makes absolutely no sense. So. Um, he's quite um, vicious right now. And it's like he wants um, the love to go away because the love brings pain. And uh, so if he could stab me now, I would be the love that disappears so he can um, control. He can control um, what the heart is able to access feelings wise. And uh, so we should actually feel very sorry for him, not disappointed or anything because he's having a hard time you know it's a good thing in the energy world this venting is is a positive thing it doesn't hurt anybody okay yeah he's really upset because he can't kill me he can't make me go away and i'm just simply a reflection of love that's here to help but that's how hurt that this part of him has been that he can't tolerate the love he just can't tolerate it I just hold him like a baby and I tell him you can cry, you can scream as much as you want, but I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to hold you. I'm just going to hold you and you just cry, scream, feel whatever you need to feel, take your little baby hand and stab me. It, it will eventually um, actually cycle itself out because I got to help him get to a place where he's able to digest love on this vibrational level. Because the deeper we go, the more I'm accessing, I'm, I'm able to get love into you and I'm able to get you to tolerate more love and let go of the need to self-sabotage and uh, just sort of cover your heart from experiencing that energy. So he's uh, splitting into two and the baby version is actually quite calm and peaceful and uh, he's able to just rest. And this sort of spirit other half um, is, is like, uh, you know, you're lying to him. You're, you're not telling him the truth. You're manipulating him. You know, it's like, I, I know it's because 
love has hurt you. And that's why love is now manipulative. Love is now a liar. Love is now a not nice person. But I know that we can help you slowly but surely remember that you too came from love. And at one time, you, you were such a beautiful, extraordinary angel. That was all there ever was, ever will be. That's it. That's always been you. And that's still who you are. Even now, this part of you that is afraid, you're still an angel. You're still an angel. Uh, I'll tell you this, there's like a huge weakness, energy of weakness and, um, and confusion, but uh, positive uh, reflection all happening simultaneously. Um, the throat is actually starting to feel as though that it's um, healing in a way. But he still feels like a foggy cloud. And he still kind of looks like an ashy leprechaun. But he's again able to process a, a little bit deeper love. <sighs> deeper love. So I'm going to ask him. I'm going to say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to make you feel uncomfortable. And whenever you do feel uncomfortable, go ahead and react however you feel comfortable reacting because I'm going to help you through it. I'm just going to hold your hand and we'll work through it, okay? And I want you to tell me how comfortable um, you feel going deeper. And if there's a deeper place within you that you feel courageous enough, strong enough to actually go visit that deep place um, so we can really heal this entire root, this whole root system in the heart that is inspiring this uh, Novocaine um, experience. Let's see what he says. He actually goes back into the baby and um, the baby opens his eyes and I'm not working with an ashy leprechaun anymore. I'm actually working with a newborn baby. And the newborn baby doesn't know how to explain anything but has a voice but sound just like a baby. Um, so that's at least expression. That's uh, working on the throat and opening the throat to expression. This is a good thing. Okay. Oh, I say, oh, you're adorable. You're so sweet. You're wonderful. <laughs> you're wonderful. Do you, you want to go somewhere with me? Shall we go see what's down, down deeper? I'm going to take you with me. Let's go, let's go see what's down deeper. The baby's actually quite strong and fearless and angelic as well. And we, we go down a spiral staircase that's pure white, but I feel there's just so much darkness here. And it's really just pain is all that it is. It's not like evil or anything. It's just pain and hurt. And... Uh, <sighs> So as we go down, there's just more release from the throat, the mental body, emotions, heart. And this is very much so connected with the heart portal. Even the spiral down is really like the heart portal is a central um, component of this whole healing. So we just keep going down, 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 down. A tiny, what is this little, tiny little point at the end? It's like a little black bead at the very bottom. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. This, it's like really wide at first, the spiral staircase, and it goes down, 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 but it gets really narrow at the very bottom until it gets to just a tiny little black bead. And this kind of looks like um, a vortex, or it could be, again, a reflection of time, which is what, what we were just um, exploring. And we brought time closer to us through all those dimensions. And now we here we are at the bottom of this spiral, which could be reflective of time. Um, it could be a vortex to another dimension. I don't know. But at least the dimensions are working in unison in this experience. And the way you're working with it, with the dimensions as well. Okay, so this little black bead is a plug um, in the drain to make sure that, but it's interesting because it's not making sure that nothing goes down it, it's making sure that nothing from the other side comes up into this reality. I will say this is the most creepy plug. I mean, there's, there's a creepiness factor to this, but obviously we can't have a plug because that's resistance and fear. 
So the plug's got to be pulled and whatever happens, happens, but it's the best thing that could possibly happen because we're allowing change and movement and we're facing the experiences and that's good. That's very good. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I pull a plug and you wouldn't believe what happens next, but everything above starts to melt like ice cream. So it's kind of melting in like goop and not like, like rushing water, but it's just like melting like ice cream. And then I see it's all you and you're starting to melt like ice cream. And it's like, you're funneling down this drain. Not what I expected, but let's see. Oh man, this is, this, there is seriously something to this. Now, let me keep watching. You still haven't melted all the way. And I'm not supposed to stop the melting. So, and you're not the Wicked Witch of the West either. The water did not get thrown. Again. Okay, so let's see. Okay. You're almost melted into zero. It, you didn't go down the drain, though. The drain was pulled and you, you just started to melt, but you melted into nothing. Like, literally, there's nothing left but a white um, funnel. That's like a staircase. It goes to a narrow opening. Oh man, what in the world is this? So, okay, let me see here. Um, hmm. I'm trying to go through it. it I'm, not, I, I'm not able to just yet, but let's see. All right, so as above, um, so too below, as they say. So I just duplicate what is above and then I make it so it is below. And then I create, I just go through the opening. And um, oh man, it's like an Alice in Wonderland moment. Um, I don't know. It, this, this is really important because what I'm experiencing is also related to what your energy field experiences. And it doesn't know which dimension that it's in. It doesn't know if it came from another dimension um, or if this was the same one. It's just only upside down. Or if this is actually right side up and just perceiving it as upside down. Or it doesn't seem to re recall or know. Um, which side of the universe that it is in. <laughs> it's the best way I could define this. Very interesting. But I tell, I, it's not like I can put that back. I can't put that back. Um, like as in take the white funnel and then put it back. It's interesting how two uh, funnels um, it creates the hourglass. I mean, it looks like an hourglass shape of two white funnels um, connected at a point. Um, but it's, it's like an hourglass interesting because time is once again coming up here okay i'm going uh, this is a more complicated let me just watch this for a little bit okay hmm. all right one um idea i'm, I'm just looking at it from far away and it's just a white like a white hourglass or a triangle upside down triangle right side up triangle that's sort of kissing in the middle <laughs> but it's just like a kind of um it's just slowly turning and just uh slowly moving through the voids of the infinite space <laughs> and nobody knows about it like zero people know about this Nobody knows. Like it's, it's like it, and it, it's just out there for some reason. Nobody's discovered it, <laughs> and I'm just watching this. Like, what? What in the world? <laughs> the reality is everybody knows about it, but in this case, in this dimensional reality, nobody knows about it. <laughs> so weird. I'm just watching it. It's like a weird Twilight Zone moment, but yet we don't know what the punchline of any of this is. Okay. Um. Let me see here. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna take these two uh, triangles apart. Um, so they're just two white triangles and they're right next to each other. And they're pointing up to the sky. So they're just two white triangles in a dark world. Like there's little tiny pinpoints of stars, but this is all there is. Two white triangles standing side by side and this is quite strange because um i know there's like a like twin identities you hear it's kind of reminding me of like a twin self but it's not quite going all the way there yet and uh, let me see hmm. 
I'm just going to ignore it. I, I feel like I'm spending too much time trying to make sense of this. And I'm going to go into a new version of an experience, which is taking us deeper than this place. And, and now I'm just like going down the drain of this universe. That's what I feel like I need to do next. It's just suddenly a, an opportunity to go through what is this, a sudden portal down there. And I'm just going through it. It's like a black hole. And this is yet another strange thing. <clears throat> so when I go through it, I, I enter into literally what looks like a basket and it's a black wire basket and it's hanging in a completely white world. And the basket is made up of, um, because it's like wire, like um, a chain link fence, it's got like triangle shapes in it. And I'm bringing these two white triangles from the other side down in here. And let's just see what happens. Hmm. Okay. It just kind of blends in with the white walls, with the white everywhere. And uh, this basket, it's this next thing, next thing, next thing. Let's see what happens next. This basket just sort of a it's like hanging from somewhere and it's just sort of like now falling and I'm falling in this basket. I'm going to become a third party observer and now I'm going to see you falling in this basket and let's see where you go. Yeah, okay, you're going down a white slide now and again, yet another funnel into a black hole, into like a black bee, but this is a much larger black hole. And it goes swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl and swirl down this black liquid, down this black hole in the black basket. And you don't seem to really care. You don't really seem to pay any attention. Like you, sh you should be reacting. You should be like, what in the world is going on here? Why am I going? What? What is happening? Like you're not reacting. You're just numb again. You're just letting things just happen, I guess. And I know it's just me moving through places, but this is also you trying to figure out something, find something, bring something into balance, and none of it makes sense. But none of it really comes with a lot of feelings in order to decipher what it means to you. So again, the Novocaine kind of feeling to this whole movement and Novocaine feeling. So I'm just literally clapping my hands to make, I make a loud noise and I stop time. And you're not going to go down this black drain. You're literally going nowhere. I take this version of you out. And we're going to have to work on feelings again. Feeling things. Experiencing feelings. Because it's all numbed up here. Man, it, it's, it feels even number way down here than it did way up there. I mean, this is like, I can't even taste my food numb. This is like, I don't even think I have a face numb. That's how seriously numb it is. How did it get like this? Okay. Hmm. Give me a moment here. I'm just going to really close my eyes and go deep inside myself to explore what to do next. Okay. Okay. This has to do with the weird interdimensional, the sliced bread. That's some, uh, That's what they're sh showing me. It's quite complex. Um, it has to do with sacred geometry as well. It is a complex shape and it's made out of black lines and it looks, it's very complex shape. And it has to do with the interdimensionality that's not lining up quite right. And that's part of what takes part of your emotions away. So you can't actually feel things. Because you're two, you're two, the, the dimensions, like you gotta be, you gotta be in oneness in all dimensions, not like they're all slices of bread. And where are your emotional body? Where's your emotional body? My emotional body is located on the 11th dimension and then the fourth dimension and the 72nd dimension, but that's it. <laughs> so, how are you gonna pull all of that information, which it should be interconnected with all dimensions, into you in this moment as, as Johannes, as a human in the now? Like you got to have your emotional body in all interconnect interdimensionally connected to everything because our emotional body, our mental body, sexual body, throat, all that stuff, our, all of our chakras are interdimensionally connected. So if we pull one out of certain dimensions, we can't process literally everything that is taking place because it just becomes numb or we don't, we don't know how to process it. We're kind of disconnected from it. 
just talking about this is jump starting something inside you. So just talking about this is, is like it's clicking something inside you. And I will tell you, believe it or not, this face is so small. It's sort of like um, when you see Ant-Man go like super small and he just goes through like world after world after world. And it's just like, how much smaller can it get? But it looks so huge. That's kind of like what this place is. It's like a weird um, like atomic place, like a super tiny place. But this super tiny place is also enormously, um, <laughs> it's like a making enormous... Uh, enormous big deal because it's a it's like a vibrational gong it's just like ringing from this little pinpoint throughout your whole energy field it's crazy it's just wild so yeah this is actually starting to move things in your heart your emotional gut believe it or not your heart will actually had parts of your emotional gut in it I, I feel it moving down moving downward to where it belongs and I feel your throat starting to I mean this is starting to feel more natural in the throat it feels like the heart is more breathable. Emotional gut is where it belongs. Sexual body is starting. It's like, oh man, it's like uh, the mamushka cups are like, like somehow the heart portal, the, the emotional gut and the sexual body were like getting smaller and smaller parts in the heart in a way that was not balanced, but they're sort of sinking back into their locations and throat it, believe it or not is, but moving. I mean, everything is starting to move back to a natural location. This feels so much better. Oh man, I mean, this is like a super successful feeling right now. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to linger here for a bit. I just want to watch. I want to watch it. I just want to make sure it continues to circulate in this way. <sighs> yeah, it is. It's totally continuing to circulate in this way. Um, with doing all of this, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to just, I want to hang in here for a little bit and just do a little bit of chakra body balancing stuff just to really, just to really like bring it on home. Okay. Just a moment. I just want to go deeper inside myself and make sure I'm not missing anything from this place. Yeah. Everything is already starting to disappear. It's already reconciled itself. Okay. What's the next thing? All right. I'm just going to amplify the colors of your chakras. Just amplify their colors. That's all I'm going to do right now. So we're going to really make it so you're a vibrant rainbow from top to bottom. That's what I'm going to do for starters here. So I'm just amplifying all the colors. Really bringing them out. And I want to see which one doesn't feel comfortable being that color. Okay, they're all kind of reacting. Um, root, root though, it really feels solid within itself, which is amazing, <laughs> but they're kind of, um, a lot of them feel a little bit paler and so some sadness is coming out. There's shyness. So it's just sort of like your chakras are saying, um, we're not quite sure yet. We're not comfortable in ourselves yet. Um, so we're kind of shy right now. Um, we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to be forced to be the singer in the choir if we're not really confident in our voice. So can we just be a little bit paler, um, until we build confidence? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you can't be paler that you, you gotta be vibrant and you gotta believe in yourselves because I believe in you. So why in the world would I believe in you? that you don't believe in you, that, does, that, that doesn't compute, because I am just as much you, and you are just as much me, and I believe in you, so, so no, you can't be paler, that, that doesn't work, uh, they're like, yeah, they're kind of like <laughs> scrambling, they're like, what? why do you keep telling us what to do, why do you say that to us, <laughs> we just don't want to be bright, we just want to be paler, can't, can we just be in the back corner, <laughs> can't we just be the fly on the wall, they're like, like really getting angry about this, I believe in them just like this is like getting defensive because I believe in them because I love them <laughs> stop loving me stop believing in me let me not believe in myself for a little while longer <laughs> no no you don't so I'll see <laughs> okay it's so weird like root is vibrantly red like why is it so red I'm surprised that it's like so bright and everybody else is just like sensitive and uncertain, insecure, a little bit insecure. But red seems cool. Red seems like good for some reason. <laughs> All right, let me keep watching here. All right, so red feels like pretty solid. And I'm just going to tell all your chakras, I'm going to say, you know what? 
Thank you for being honest with me. And thank you for allowing me to be honest with you about how I feel. And thank you for taking the time to just simply process my feelings. And I'm choosing to process your feelings too. And I think it would be really great. I know some of you just came from the heart in a really weird way, weird way, but um, I like to just allow you to have a community of support in the heart portal in a balanced way where everybody can start working together and supporting each other and nobody needs to be sensitive or afraid because if throat, you need a little bit of encouragement, heart, emotional gut, sexual body, mental body, they're all, all going to be there for you. So that way, throw it if you feel a little sensitive, just tell them and they can start to help it strengthen you because all of you energy bodies are going through your own things, but you need to work together, not separately. You got to work together. They seem to um, feel better about that. <sighs> they feel okay about this and they're already starting to kind of um, brighten up more. They're already starting to get brighter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My God. Skype call, I guess. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna. I oh, need to hang in here for a moment. Okay. I gotta get back here. Okay. All right. I don't know. Give me just a second here, Johannes. I gotta like sign out of it. My kids are trying to get a hold of me, and I don't know what's going on here. Um, yes, sign, sign out of that. <laughs> they will get a phone call <laughs> shortly. Okay, let me get back because I want to I wanna finalize this thing for you. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting back in the zone here. All right, so I'm taking, I'm going to take, I'll just start with throat here. And as I want to just move all the energy bodies into the heart portal, just in a way where they can feel in a special space within the center of your universe where they can all feel loved and supported. So I'm moving throat into the heart. <sighs> throat will always be in throat, but it's going to have more of a consciousness identity within the heart. And I'm going to move mental body into the heart. <sighs> and I'm going to move emotional gut into the heart. I'm going to move sexual body into the heart. <sighs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting. There's a really interesting reaction going on here. Um, I'm going to have to go in your heart really quick because there's a coral. There's like they're fighting right now. Very surprising. Let's see. Uh, okay, what is this? It looks like an acidic soda pop. And they're all like little um, puffs on the inside and they're kind of being burned alive. And let me see what's going on. And you've got another side of yourself coming in here and telling me how dare I, how dare I, how dare I. Again, it's afraid of love. And I'm going to ask him, I say, can you help me understand here why you're so angry? Can you help me understand why you're so angry? You're hurting yourself again. Do, do you remember that? Do you remember the pawns and the horseman and all the other layers? Do you remember hurting yourself? The needles and the rotten strawberry? You don't want to have a rotten strawberry heart. You've already told me this. So can you help me understand why you are so angry? He says, because nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. And when he says that, he snaps into an echo of like a thousand versions of himself, all men on a horse. They all look the same. And he just instantly snaps and he says, nobody loves me. And then I hear the echo and it goes in a bajillion. It's just like he's echoing and duplicating, 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 a billion, bajillion, bajillion, more duplicating, duplicating, duplicating for all time, for all eternity. Nobody loves me. That's what he says. And that is in all time forever and ever and ever and it's duplicating itself and it's exponentially duplicating itself in all times forever and ever and ever and he says it so loud and he wants everybody to hear him he wants to know that he is not loved so he wants everybody to know the whole universe <sighs> hmm
give me a moment here. I'm, I'm just making a decision here. I mean, one thing I could do is I could just trap him in a box and then just send him out into all eternity where he can be imprisoned within himself. And then you, Johannes, don't have to deal with it because he hasn't learned his lesson yet. Kind of reminds me of that twin on the edge of the universe that, you know, you know, he hasn't figured it out yet. So I could definitely do that. That's going to help you. Let me see if that's what the, what like the higher universe feels is the right appropriate thing to do. Let me see if you want me to do that deep down inside. You have a very young version of yourself that has been watching this other version for a while and is belligerently um, wanting to help, wanting to help, wanting to help, patient as all get out. We'll never leave. We'll never stop trying to help. We'll never stop trying to help, which is then creates the attachment to somebody who will never stop saying, I'm not loved. Nobody loves me. And then, so you're in a vicious cycle. Are you not loved or are you loved? And do you love yourself enough that you would stay with yourself for all eternity to try to help you convince yourself that you're totally loved? You see how crazy this whole thing is? So I'm going to talk to this little version of you. And I'm going to say, when are you going to give yourself credit? And when are you going to demand that that part of you gives you credit to? Because that part of you is taking all of your time and saying, I am not loved in all dimensions of all time and distorting everything for you. And you're allowing it to happen because you love that part of yourself so much, but that part of yourself is way out of line and is not loving or respecting you back. So eventually you have to say no. You got to say no to that thing. I mean, that thing has become a monster in its own right by choice. It decided to be that way. It's demanding to be that way. It wants to be that way. It's refusing to be any other way. And, it, and you need to decide what's the healthiest choice for you. I feel the healthiest choice for you is to start loving yourself enough to say no to that. Let's see what he says. Boy, he's really a loving. He's a little angel. He is a little angel. <laughs> He just doesn't want to give up on him. And I say, this isn't giving up. That doesn't exist in an infinite universe. You know, it's not giving up. It's just choosing to love yourself and love that part of yourself enough to love yourself enough to say no for a time in this infinite time. So just, just, just give it a try. Just Let's just give it a try and see what happens. If you don't like it, you can bring him back anytime. You can totally bring him back whenever you want to. But he is messing up your game here. Let's see. Let's see what the boy says. Oh, yeah. And, um, I'm sticking with this for a bit, Johannes, because this is kind of a crucial thing. Um, so the boy is actually um, agreeing with me, but hit this, I put him in a box. He's not coming out. No, he will never come out. I have I've literally imprisoned that part of your soul, and that's not going to hurt you. That part of your soul needs to self-realize. So it, it, there's a reason why it was imprisoned in the first place, because it hasn't taken enough time. I told you, I come across souls that have been pr imprisoned for so long, it's like they've been stretched so thin. It, it's absolutely horrendous to feel it, but they become so full of great gratitude. They totally transform in that state and in that place, and then they return to source, and you wouldn't believe how extraordinary bright. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. It's a powerful celebration when that happens but he's still being a jerk. Like, why should we let him be, continue to be a jerk forevermore? He hasn't learned his lesson yet. That's what karma is. We all have to learn our lessons. <laughs> so, so somehow though, he's bleeding darkness into this little boy and this little boy still feels attachment. So let me keep working on this here. Mm. I tell him one more time, I say, you have the power to take a vacation. And why don't you take a vacation for a good while? And when you feel like you've taken a vacation enough, you can always check on your brother, okay? And I, t I show this little version of you experiences from my own life where I've had to literally sever the connection because it was just absolutely too manipulative, too negative to the point I was devastated. And then you can always check back a year later 
can always check back a couple years later, you know, because this manipulative thing was an energy being like a best friend. So I know what this is like and I can say no and I can, I can become brighter from that choice. And that could be my lesson as well to learn how to say no to something that is draining me. I'm showing him this and how empowered that made me feel. It was hard, but it was good. Mm. I'm taking this little boy to a heavenly space where he can be surrounded by light and love. And I'm bringing Ra, the sun guy, God in here and to really rejuvenate and really bring him into a place of, of self-love and self-realization that is okay to give his brother time to, to figure this out. He has to do this because you, Johannes, need this too. And Johannes needs this. Johannes is asking for this. Johannes is asking for help. Hmm. All right. So this is, uh, this is helping the chakras again in the heart portal. They, they don't look like little puffs and acid, acidic Coca-Cola. They actually start to look like um, circulating colors of rainbow. And I will say this is a bit sensitive um, and your energy field feels um, like, like this is a bit of a shock, but it, it's a good thing. Your root is still really red, still really vibrant, really confident and sure of itself. I'm just going to bring root on down to Earth Star Chakra, and we're just going to do this, um, just add this into your session, because you just simply need this to really give you a good balance and a fresh start. Yeah, that's better. And just root into earth star chakra and then crown into soul star chakra. And we're just expanding them out. And I'm taking the all the information from the heart and I'm placing it into earth star chakra and soul star chakra. And we're just allowing them to all feel interconnected and as though they're breathing as sort of one breath and one exhalation and circulating in a really good way. Ah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, great. <laughs> I know it's a well, wild it's a wild journey yeah. and sometimes it's yeah, hard to yeah. know what it all means. Well, it was a roller coaster I felt uh, pain and much during the time, but also great the times and now I feel great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Abby. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Johannes. I'm curious to for some updates on how you're doing. Um and so you know, just let me know. <laughs> I will, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. I feel really light and energetic right now. It's great. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. Remember, um, one thing I, I think that you should um, just really, like, feel you, you yourself are, that angelic version. That is so absolute. I mean, that angelic version of you was, like, pure angel so pure of an angel will spend all eternity to help somebody you know will help. but there comes a point in time where you got to heal too right where you matter too and a lot of really beautiful loving people will put themselves on the back burner to help others who will take advantage of them right so so it's not selfish to say no um, and so to remember and to feel that angelic side of you is going to help you kick that, that to the curb, any kind of, um, you know, feelings of resorting back, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this session is going to make a help. <laughs> yeah. I feel totally different. Right? It's really, it's, okay. it's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did you have any thoughts or questions or anything? Yeah, well, it's uh, ooh, right now. It's energy is totally different. Like I'm like a new person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, if any if anything comes up, you know, feel free to send me a message. Yeah. And um, yeah, sure. So it's okay. So but really, like it, like it's. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. What did oh, you no, say? You go ahead and talk. I didn't know because okay. sometimes. Yep. After sessions, people can feel a little like, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so.
So if you, yeah, go ahead and, and tell me what, whatever you were thinking. Okay. Well, it's just because, like you said, like you're going into deeper layers, deeper layers. How deep did you went right now? Like, it's is it now the deepest layer? Is the I will the say layer again. <laughs> well, you never really know how deep they go until you just keep going deeper. But that space at the end with the funnels, I mean, that that was a beyond. That that is a kind of like a. How would I even describe how that space would be even remotely? Re related to our world. I mean, it's like an Ant-Man going to super, super small, but yet it has a powerful impact. And somehow the, the, the little ringing gong from that tiny place is getting louder and louder and louder enough to that this level, you're experiencing it. And it's just like distorting things. It's so weird. Mm -hmm. But that that is so deep. It's almost not even, you almost can't tell. But there's also a lot of numb stuff going on there too. But yeah, that, that's a big deal. And then bringing those chakras into the heart and seeing that random reaction tells me that there's yet, there's something I'm still fishing out here to make sure we, you know, we don't go back to that. We don't revert, you know, that it stays strong and sturdy, a new foundation that's not, you know, made on broken glass, but it's actually like solid and it can't be busted down and we can actually start building on that foundation, you know? Okay, so you really believe it's that that yeah. uh, uh, real foundation? Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would yeah. be great. But I'm already feeling much changes again in the heart, mental body. Like it's <laughs> that's really good. I'm so glad <laughs> you hear that. <laughs> awesome. Just just remember, if anything feels vulnerable, just just remember. You know what? I am an angel, and I am so sweet that I dedicate eternity to helping souls in challenge. And it's okay for me to start focusing on loving me. And that's what I need right now. So to actually take on, there's power when you take on, um, you know, speaking to yourself as though this is real. Sometimes we speak to ourselves about what appears to be real. Yeah, that person's a jerk. You know, that person's always doing this. But if we say, you know what? Um, that person has taught me so much about love and I couldn't be more grateful to have that person in my life. You see the difference on how it shifts your energy when we alter the way we communicate with ourselves and about our lives. And so if you find yourself feeling vulnerable at all, um, just it's, you know, it can be, this stuff can be works in progress too, but this is totally getting you a huge step forward. And we just keep making those huge step forwards and continuing to encourage your energy field to remember that I don't, I don't know anything about um, feeling numb in my heart. And I feel so much. I feel so bright. Even if you notice yourself feeling kind of like, man, that thing's happening again, just say, I don't know anything about that. You just say that to yourself. Say, my heart is full of light. My heart is bright and I, I love people. I love earth. I love humanity. It's affirmations and they start weaving realities and you're a creator. I mean, you create so you can weave your own realities and you've got the power. So, so that's some yeah. tips. <laughs> Thank you. You're yeah, well, I, I totally know that I can, but it's tough if I'm it not able to see anything you know <laughs> i do i do agree actually i find that it's toughest to say the right thing like to turn it into a positive when we feel anguish because anguish becomes very convincing especially when we can feel it you know it's it's convincing but we have to be stronger than it um and just continue to face it and say no i don't feel anguish I don't know anything about English as best as you can. It's easier said than done. But when you relentlessly do this day after day after day, you will discover like, holy crap, three months later, looking back, that actually works. That actually does work. And it does. It really does. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome, Johannes. Thank you. Thank you as well. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to work with you. Like him. I felt like the difference, like you said, like I was in this trapped reality kind of, and I worked yeah. like three months at the time with one one teacher and like she opened my heart and it was not really working. And they're like, it's open, it's open. Like, what can you do, you know? And now you discovered like, oh, okay, it's like trapped riddle experience. And now yeah. it's like developing again so fast. It's 
Right. Just awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, <laughs> and, and remember too, Johannes, you are a super infinite being. So let's say you take, you, you have a salt shaker, you have one salt shaker, but then you take the, the cap off and you pour all the salt out. You are every single one of those little grains of salt. You have so many collective parts of you. And so the more that we go into all the different parts of yourself and bring it all back into the salt shaker in a balanced way, you're going to feel all your totality. You know what I mean? You really will. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, everything adds up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. I just, I really hope that it will now make a difference so I can actually like really um, see stuff, you know, like spiritual stuff, other dimensions and all of that. I really desire to have that experience again because I had it as a child and I know mm -hmm. how it is and like, I yeah. really want it back. <laughs> well, just you wait because this session plus the so chakra yeah. body transformation session is going to be a great lead into the psychic mentoring session and psychic mentoring session. You will, I will be able to teach you how to see again. So um, this is going to be a really good stepping stone, like good staircase into re-merging with that psychic part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> okay, Johannes. Thank you for the pleasure of getting to work with you again. It's delightful. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's really mm -hmm. delightful. A pleasure to work with you too. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, have an awesome rest of your week and you too thank you thank you see you soon <laughs> okay yes see you soon